Hello and good evening or good morning, depending on your time zone. Thank you for joining us this evening at the BTRM information session. Pleasure to, to have your company this evening. We're going to talk about Certificate of Bank Treasury Risk Management and uh, its, its content, its format, and possibly how it might be of value and benefit to your professional development and, and advancement in the Treasury and balance sheet risk management space. So, BTRM information session. Let's proceed. And of course, you can ask questions at any time. Feel free, if you're in the room or live and online, to ask a question, and we'll uh, we'll address them uh, as soon as we can. So, certificate of bank treasury risk management. What is it? Well, it's a professional qualification. Uh, five years old now. It, uh, cohort one began in October 2014, and uh, we're actually finishing cohort nine. The exam for cohort nine is this month, and cohort ten will start next month on the 9th of October. So it has been, um, it's now getting to that, not quite mature phase, but it is getting seasoned. And uh, we're continuously developing, as you can imagine, because bank financial markets never stand still. So it's, uh, we look to make it a continuously updated professional qualification for balance sheet risk managers within banking. It's specifically a bank professional qualification for practitioners in banking. What is it? Well, it talks about, we've got their, it's a professional qualification in bank treasury risk management, balance sheet management. The core of it is asset liability management, ALM. Asset liability management is a core discipline in banking. And of course, every bank has to apply it, practice it. It's not a specific or specialist area of banking. Every bank, however large or small or simple or complicated, uh, has to have an ALM function to manage its balance sheet. So it is actually a core discipline in all banking, in all banks, in, every, in any jurisdiction around the world. It's a six-month qualification. It's a part-time qualification, one weekly lecture. I'll show you the format uh, shortly. And um, it's, uh, it's practitioner-orientated. If you want, when, we look, when I introduce you to the faculty a bit later, you'll see that the um, practitioners are essentially current or recently retired practitioners of very long standing. Uh, so we are bankers developing the program for bankers. And the emphasis is on practical relevance, and as it says there on the slide, equipping students with tools and techniques that they can apply in their day job. Okay? Um, and we like to think it's the only global professional qualification exclusively for bank, treasury, finance, and risk professionals, and it is indeed global, can be taken anywhere in the world, and indeed examined anywhere around the world. And we'll talk about that shortly as well. So what is it? So graduate level, in the UK we call it level seven, so it's equivalent in terms of analysis and, and, and intellectual ability, uh, sorry, intellectual content as a, a level seven, a graduate a master's qualification uh, provided around the world, six month duration. Uh, lectures are streamed live over the internet, so if you are not physically in the classroom in London, in our lecture suite here in Canary Wharf in, in, in London, then of course you will watch the lecture live on your desk, on your desktop, be it at home or at work, uh, or wherever you wish, really. And if, of course, again, because it's live, it's because it's on the internet, it's recorded. If you want, if it's not in your time zone, we have a lot of students um, in, in, in several time zones away from London. Uh, then, of course, they're watching the lecture recorded in their own time, the time that suits them. They'll watch the, the recording. Practitioner orientated, as I mentioned, uh, the faculty are all uh, respected practitioners, um, and we like to trumpet the lifelong learning aspect of the BTRM. Once you are an alumni, or alumnus, I should say, of BTRM, there are continuous uh, learning there is continuous learning available to you. Webinars, ad hoc webinars, thought leadership articles. You yourself are able to contribute to our academic and thought leadership article program. Okay? And indeed, we're, we, we, we always welcome students qualified to become contributors to the BTRM. In fact, one, or two, one of our faculty is a former student and is now a faculty member and delivering one of our lectures. So it's lifelong learning. It's not just a six-month qualification and that's that you're done. It's really about developing you as a professional, your technical and professional knowledge and advancement throughout your career. So who is the faculty? Um, the, if you have, uh, you'll be able to see the, our brochure online. Um, we have our cohort 11 brochure that's now available on the BTRM website. And they do come from uh, various different banking backgrounds and they are based around the world. They're not all based in, here in the UK. Uh, we have... Helena there in the second row, she's based in Vienna, we're working for Spurbank, the Russian bank. We have uh, Patrick Carey based in, the, in, in Ireland. We have Dubo Chang, who's based in Hong Kong. We have Andrew Cremonino, he's based in Italy. And Michael Eichhorn, he's based in London, but he just travelled the world for Credit Suisse. 
uh, as a senior uh, liquidity risk uh, practitioner. Uh, so we've got a, a global faculty as well as a global student body, and each of them are specialists in their own area that they present the, the lecture on. So we've, what sort of people take the qualification? If you look at the, the slide, you'll see that we have people coming from very different areas, and there's also different areas of seniority. We've had C-suites, CROs, CFOs, treasurer, uh, in the, on the cohort, as well as more junior members of staff, and they come from different disciplines, whether it's treasury, money markets, ALM, finance, second line of defense, uh, second line of defense with, with, with risk people within the risk department. We have uh, lots of different disciplines all within the balance sheet risk management space. We've had internal auditors take the degree. We've had, sorry, the course, the certification. We've had uh, management consultants. We've had people working for the regulator. So we've had lots of different diverse backgrounds and job titles attending the course, taking the qualification. The one thing they have in common is they have an interest in their professional life with balance sheet risk management and banking. That's the one thing uh, that our, our students all have in common. As it says, their cohort 10 is starting next month, 9th of October, uh, and it's a, the program is, repeated, is, is, is renewed every six months, so cohorts start every April and every October. Global profile, we have students from all around the world. As I said, we're in lots of different time zones, uh, both uh, the, the east and west of the, of the UK, of the, of the Greenwich Mean Time time zone. And in fact, I, I was pleased to see that uh, the origin of our students, the base, the student, where the students are based is now, the list is now 57 different countries worldwide that have taken the BTRM qualification. And here are a number of, uh, here's a list of some, not all of the banks that have sent their employees to take the BTRM qualification there to be students of the BTRM. Uh, we have some very well-known institutions, as you can imagine, there on the left-hand column, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the Bank of England, uh, Barclays, Islamic Development Bank, and we have some lesser-known institutions, small institutions, but uh, again, what they have in common is they have students, they have employees who are keen to develop and advance their professional progress by taking this, this qualification. But there, as you can see, there's a wide range of institutions whose employees have, have taken the BTRM. Okay, so what is the BTRM journey? Well, meet the faculty, that's what you're doing today. Uh, we're one of the faculty, at least, that's what you're doing today. Um, we are always available to answer any questions you may have either now or after this presentation. Um, and then, of course, you will apply online by the registration form. Uh, generally, the admissions team should return back to you within three business days. Uh, you will then begin the program. Because we have delegates of different experience levels, we always begin lecture one as the primer, which is the introduction to banking and to bank business models and bank ALM, that's the primer. And then the remaining 22 lectures are the specific technical lectures connected with the syllabus, okay? Before the start of the program, you will receive the full set of materials, that's the student handbook, which is essentially the reference text for all the lectures, as well as three uh, textbooks, which I will show at the end of this presentation. There is a core textbook for the program, which is uh, my book, uh, Principles of Banking. There's two other textbooks you receive. Your handbook is the key reference text for the lectures as well. Okay, so you'll receive all this material before the start of the program. We then have the five modules. 22 remaining lectures after the primer, uh, split into five modules, and you'll see the modules in a second when we go through them, uh, which um, a weekly lecture, one lecture every Wednesday evening, or every Wednesday I should say, uh, and, at the end of, and at the end of each module, the student takes an online multiple choice question test, just to check progress of the module, and then at the end of the last lecture, the last module online test, the students sit the exam. Exams are sat on the same day all around the world. Uh, we try and get them to start at 10 a.m. in the local time zone, but of course that means uh, if you're in, uh, if you're in uh, for example, in North America, you will be sitting at 10 a.m. Uh, having take, to take the exam that's already been taken uh, in the later time zone. Uh, that can't be helped, but we do all want the exams to take place on the same day, and they do in your local examination center. I should emphasize this is a global qualification, so the exams are taken in your local center. Uh, we will, we will uh, sort out the center location. You will then be contacted by the center, and you will go and sit the exam there. So the exam date is known to you in advance. When you receive the program materials, you'll see the lecture timetable and you see the exam date. So you'll know at the start of the program the date of the exam. And then in good time, you will be advised of your local examination center, so local to your jurisdiction. Uh, so for example, if you're in the United States, 
Uh, they won't all be held in Washington, D.C. <laughs> they will be local to your state. Okay, uh, if you're in Hong Kong <laughs> or if you're in Dubai, it'll all be fairly reasonably accessible for you within your, the city where you live. So uh, they will be local to you. You'll be advised of this examination center and you'll take the exam on the same day as every other student. Um, the exam is traditional. It's a paper-based, sight unseen, written examination. It isn't multiple choice three hours, and at the end of it, you submit that, it's marked, and hopefully if you get a 60% pass mark, you have obtained the qualification. 80% grants you a pass with distinction. Okay, so that's the BTRM journey, and from the start, from today through to the end, it's gonna be uh, seven months or six months of the actual course, but your introduction evening is today, that's one month before. But a cohort is, is six months. You can apply for the cohort up until three days before the start of that cohort, uh, we have had students who, like, who have applied and been accepted on the program after it started, but we generally don't recommend that if it's beyond the first two lectures. Okay? There's certainly no problem to apply and get on the program uh, a few days before the start. Okay. So how's the program delivery? Well, here's the student's portal. First of all, the dedicated forum. I should talk about the, the, the student's forum, the faculty forum. That is... Uh, the online, it's, the, the, it's, it's the, me the means by which you will be able to engage with the faculty and indeed other students uh, at any time, day or night. Most commonly, uh, a student will, will post a question or query or comment on, on a lecture and then we guarantee a response, whatever the nature of the post, on the forum within 24 hours by a member of faculty, by the relevant member of faculty or a relevant member of faculty. So that's the student forum. And of course, it's not just for questions and queries about the lectures, it's for any comment. You may have a recommendation or a comment or a, or a, or a general query or an observation on the market. So uh, we, the forum is a way for students to actively engage with the faculty. I think it's very important to make use of it because of course, the students who are not based in, the UK, in London and are coming physically to the lectures, they're not going to meet the faculty in person. So this is a good way to engage with the faculty. So you've got the forum, you've got the live lectures once a week, which are recorded and available to you at any time. You've got the slide decks associated with the lectures. You have the student handbook, which I mentioned, the, the student handbook. Um, you've got exercises and case studies. We will make available where relevant sample templates, policy documents. Uh, we have ad hoc webinars. We also have a regulatory update webinar, which takes place well, at least once during the program. And then we have this lifelong learning that I mentioned earlier. We emphasize the continuous uh, engagement with the BTRM after you have obtained your your qualification. Okay, so the course outline. There's the pre-course primer lecture, which is one lecture, then we have 22 remaining lectures split into five modules, okay? At the end of each module, you take your online test, your multiple choice test. As I said, this is not contributing to your final mark. This is simply to check progress on the module. One does need to pass it, um, and one needs to pass all five before, in order to take the exam. Okay, and one is allowed one reset of the online test. So there's five modules. Let's have a look at in detail at the, um, the split. So module one, bank balance sheet management. Um, so that looks at ALM as a discipline, Basel three rules, uh, and then ALM trading and hedging principles. Okay, that's module one. Module two is about the treasury operating model and the um, ALCO governance operating model. Okay, so we've got a treasury operating model, that's module two. ALCO, where the ALCO should sit, the ALCO terms of reference. By ALCO, of course, I mean the Asset Liability Committee. And then we have ALCO and credit risk management. Remember, ALM to us is bank-wide, it's the whole balance sheet. So there are a number of topics within the BTRM that may not necessarily be how your institution, your bank is organized, but we feel it's important for ALM managers to be aware of them. So we do have a credit risk and credit risk management lecture associated with this module on ALCO governance and operating model. Module three, strategic ALM and the financial markets. So capital markets, securitization, and then we have, and also credit ratings. It's very common in small institutions for the credit rating process to be managed or project managed by the treasury team. So that's why we include credit rating process, the S&P and Moody's and Pitch rating process lecture within module three. We also have a section on investor relations. Again, the large banks have best specialist investor relations teams, but small banks don't. So we have a section on that as well. Now we've put in there, you could possibly suggest that lecture number 12 doesn't sit necessarily in module three. In fact, 
But so that's because uh, Lecture 12 is one of these topics that's a topic in its own right. It's kind of stand on its own. So we've put it into Module 3, recovery planning and resolution planning, getting a lot uh, of increased attention from regulators now uh, in, lots of, in many jurisdictions. So we've got a specific uh, lecture on recovery planning and resolution planning. Module 4 is the, the longest module, the module with the most lectures, and possibly you probably won't be surprised by that. Liquidity risk management. Okay, so there's uh, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven lectures associated with liquidity risk management. And they get quite, as you, you won't be surprised to hear, they get quite uh, technical and specialist. Okay, we've got liquidity risk management principles generally, which uh, includes the ILAP process, the liquidity adequacy assessment process. We talk about the, we talk about derivatives pricing and the impact on derivatives usage, either for risk or for hedging or for trading, on liquidity, uh, which is why we also have a collateral management lecture, lecture number 20. We talk about the XVAs uh, and derivatives management because they are relevant to the ALM manager. So that's uh, the, in liquidity risk management. We talk about LIBOR, that's, or what's not down there is LIBOR or IBOR reform. Uh, you know, it's different in different jurisdictions. We have a, a lecture or a content on that from one of our faculty. Uh, we talk about funds transfer pricing, and also within this lecture is the yield curve construction module. And that's relevant to this module, and you could put that in module three, financial markets. We put it in module four because the, the internal yield curve is very relevant to the FTP process, the funds transfer pricing process. So that's also in module four. So you can see module four is a, is a busy module with the most lectures in the program. And then finally, we're on module five, which is capital management, managing bank capital. So capital structure, capital strategy, capital planning, and of course the all important ICAP, capital adequacy process. That's all covered in module five. And then the last lecture, module five, that's kind of a standalone lecture, so we put it here into module five, operational risk and ALM, op risk, but op risk is specifically for ALM managers, and also a final lecture on policy documentation. Like it or not, all of us as practitioners will be following policy, drafting policy, reviewing policy, approving policy, or simply following policy rules. And so a standardized approach to that is very useful for an ALM manager to know, which is why we have a lecture on that as well. So that's the breakdown or the rundown, if you like, of the syllabus, the content of the program, split into five modules, 22 lectures, plus your primer lecture to start, so 23 lectures in all, uh, so your taught learning, 23 lectures each at three hours duration, and the remainder of your learning will be self-taught learning, uh, preparing for the exam, and indeed taking the online module tests. Right, so what textbooks do you receive as well as the student handbook? You will receive three textbooks. Uh, I confess there's a little bit of bias there in the selection. So the core, the core textbook is Principles of Banking. That's the core textbook here, Principles of Banking. Uh, we also give you the anthology text, which has a lot of the templates and policy documents that I mentioned earlier on the associated website for that book. And um, we have a, a text on fixed income markets, very relevant to you, uh, and money markets as well. So there's the course textbooks. Now, we have some other interests and associations. We have our course partner, Oracle. We have Wiley as an associate. And why is that? Because in every cohort, the highest performing, the top performing student in the cohort receives the Wiley Prize, which I believe is a few hundred pounds worth, so not, a, not an insubstantial sum, a few hundred pounds worth of textbooks, which you are free to choose from the Wiley published range. Okay, that's the Wiley Prize winner. And then one of our faculty also has, is also a sponsor of the program, that's Quadrin Group, that's Suleiman Bey, who is our securitization lecturer. The program is CPD certified. So if you wish, as well as your examination certificate, your certification, if you wish, if your employer wishes, we can supply a CPD certificate confirming the number of hours CPD you've taken, which is 300 hours, of which 70 odd is your taught learning, and the balance is, um, the balance is uh, your self-taught learning. And then finally, the program is approved to you by the US domiciled Fin Risk Financial Risk Institute. Okay, as well as the formal program, uh, we're always keen on additional learning or additional events. We hold the BTRM conference in London every two years. We have ad hoc webinars on specific topics that we'll present as well. In fact, for cohort 10, we will be having an ad hoc webinar on compliance and 
senior management regime in the UK. That's relevant globally because, of course, there is this fit and proper test if you're a senior manager all in, in any country. So we'll have a lecture, a land hoc webinar on that. We've got our regulatory updates webinar as well to be scheduled for cohort 10 as well. Okay, good. Do we have any, oh, sorry, before I conclude, Please feel free to have a look on the website and have a look at a number of our past alumni testimonials. There's a couple of pages there on the slides. The one testimonial that I am actually very proud of, I'm very pleased to receive this one, is the one in the top left-hand corner there uh, from uh, a gentleman who was uh, with Santander's treasury, group treasury function. He's actually moved on to a, a UK challenger bank, but at the time he was at Santander. And I really do like that endorsement. I'll just read it to you. I really liked the way that one would learn something at a lecture and then go back to the office and apply it next day to the day job. It was that practical and relevant, of course, for practitioners. I think coming from a Treasury and ALM person at a large UK bank, uh, we're very pleased to receive that because that's exactly what this is about. It's exactly about giving you, the student, the tools and techniques required to, to, to advance professionally in your day job. So that's, uh, that's the testimony that I'm, I'm, very, I'm most heartened to receive. There's a few more there on there as well, which I'll leave you to read at your leisure. Okay, uh, does anyone have any, any questions, either in the room or online, uh, regarding the BTRM generally or this presentation specifically? No? Okay. Well, in which case, if you do have any questions, please get back in touch with us at any time. We'll be very happy to respond to them and um, all I can say is I, I hope I get to see you on the program. Have a good evening.